I am quite keen to drill down into whether or not a, a Labour government would do away with, with minimum staffing levels during strikes. Thousands of NHS consultants are walking out again in their dispute over pay. Yes, you heard that right. People on upwards of £120,000 a year are walking out in a dispute over pay. But Health Secretary Steve Barclay says that the action is politically motivated, uh, yeah, as the health service braces for the first joint strike in its history. And it also will at some point coincide with the Conservative Party conference and will be held in the same city as the Conservative Party conference is taking place, which I think really is about as politically motivated as it gets. But the government could attempt to limit the disruption caused. They are considering introducing minimum service level regulations. So that would require some doctors and nurses to work during strikes to protect patient safety. They will basically, well, I mean, they wouldn't literally, but you would almost metaphorically drag them off a picket line and onto a ward. I think sure, surely you've got to do that. Otherwise, well, I mean, what's the point of us paying any tax whatsoever for the NHS if it just can shut down on a whim? But would Labour actually go along with this? Would Labour be the party that helped to actually essentially allow people to die by people being out on strike. Let's cross live now to Westminster to speak to our deputy political editor, Tom Harwood. Tom, what's the situation then when it comes to these definitely not politically motivated strikes that will result in people dying? Well, it's interesting, Patrick, that you referenced that uh, people may die due to less care, less cover, and indeed this almost unprecedented situation of both consultants and junior doctors going on strike at the same time, providing even less cover than we've seen before. The Prime Minister's spokesman earlier this afternoon was pressed on this question. Does he believe there will be more deaths as a result of this? And I have to say uh, that a bunch of us journalists in the room really pushed this question, but the Prime Minister's spokesman didn't budge on the deaths question. He did say that, however, there would be less care and less safety in general. So I suppose we can take from that what we can. Uh, however, it is clear that the government do want to respond to this. This, by bringing about this minimum service uh, level legislation that they've already legislated for, but hold back in reserve yeah. in terms of whether or not they implement well, it. So this is the start of a consultation now on delivering that promise. Yeah, fine, but I've got a thing here from Angela Rayner. It's exactly seven days ago. Miss Rayner also promised to repeal the government's, quotes, vicious anti-trade union laws, such as its controversial minimum service levels bill. So would that mean then, under a Labour government, there would be absolutely no chance of having a minimum service requirement, basically opening the floodgates for people to go on strike, all of them at the same time, with no public service provisions? Patrick, seven days ago at this moment in time, I was in a room with Angela Rayner up in Liverpool where she said those words mm. at the Trade Union Congress. And I have to say, it's more than that. It's not just that the Labour Party would repeal uh, minimum service level uh, legislation, which would mean, of course, that even the basic sort of Christmas Day level cover that uh, may well be uh, provided for under the minimum service level uh, legislation. It's more than that. She also said that she'd repeal the Trade Union Act. Now, this is an act that came in under David Cameron, which meant that uh, groups couldn't, that trade unions couldn't go on strike unless there was a 50% or more turnout, uh, yeah. a democratic mandate, really, for that strike. So if the Labour Party were to repeal that, what we might well see is a shift in power away from ordinary workers and towards trade union leaders, trade union barons, as they're sometimes known, whereby strikes are called with less than half of members of trade unions uh, even voting for them. Uh, that would be a fairly radical step backwards in terms of uh, trade union legislation. And I think that that, is, that would mm. be a, an even more radical step that would see more strikes than just this minimum service level stuff. Yeah, indeed. I think it's worthwhile noting that, you know, now the Labour Party have started saying things because the election is getting closer and closer. And we've got quite a lot to unpack. And I'm amazed at how easy it is proving to be. You know, you've got the idea of 16-year-olds potentially getting the vote. You've got where they are when it comes to things like asylum policy. You've got Starmer meeting Macron. What's he talking about? Are we going to end up with fishing rights on the table and ever closer Europe? You've got this kind of stuff about minimum staffing levels. And I just can't help but wonder whether or not these opinion polls are going to close between now uh, and the general election turning up, Tom, because people are finding out what Labour think. And I'm not entirely sure that, that it's that popular. 
Well, Patrick, I have to say the Labour Party has been incredibly cautious, mm. apart from in the areas where they feel like they have to not be. So when we've heard about tax and spend, the Labour Party have been very careful to not mention any taxes that they would want to raise, although critics would point to black holes in their spending plans. Yeah. Indeed, the Labour Party has also not wanted to go into detail with regard to its renegotiation with the European Union. It says on the surface of it it wouldn't want the customs union or single market membership. However, However, when it comes to actually quid pro quo deals, so for example at the Trade Union Congress last week, the Labour Party needs the trade unions on side, it needs their funding, and frankly often it needs their foot soldiers. Yeah. And in the conclusion to Angela Rayner's speech at that uh, Congress, uh, we heard her say, look, we are delivering what you want, i.e. we're repealing all of this trade union legislation, or we promise to, and in return you've got to support us. That seems like it's a, 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 almost mm. a grubby deal that has been made between the Labour Party and the trade unions. And I wonder where they need sort of quid pro quo deal making going on. We'll mm. see more leg in terms of left wing policy, but where they can keep their mouths relatively shut, yeah. we will keep this sort of strategic ambiguity that we've seen in so many other areas. All right. OK, good stuff, Tom. Thank you very much. Tom Harwood, there, our deputy political editor.